Welcome to more Powertrain Tech Talk series once again. Um, we've got here for another topic on battery development. This time I want to welcome Bob Corbishley, our Senior Principal Engineer, looking at thermal management of batteries. So I've got a few questions to ask you Bob about uh, what we do. So first thing, we've heard a lot of people mention about thermal conditioning of batteries, but what does this mean and is it the same thing for all of our clients? Well, tricky one that. Um, put it this way, we all have to play by the same rules, but when you look at all the cases, all our clients, all the scenarios, it appears we're playing a different game. So okay. the facts are that every battery, when it's being charged or discharged, will produce heat and a battery will ideally operate within a quite a narrow temperature window to allow you to use it um, optimally. So the question is, what are you doing with the battery? And wow. then we have to understand how the best way is to sort of manage the heat for that application. So whether it could be in a car, truck, off-road, in an aircraft, So it's more about the due cycle of what that vehicle is actually exactly. doing. Exactly, yeah. Okay. So you take the, take the scenario of um, a car being um, rapidly charged and then used at high load, and that obviously puts on a very high demand um, almost all the time. So you can be under a lot of thermal stress, whereas, um, for example, a, a truck doing a, a relatively long distance uh, duty might be on a very modest uh, power load compared to its, its battery capacity, so the heat output might not be so much. But ultimately, you do have to keep the battery operating at a certain temperature. Okay, so is all this heat then just an inconvenience? Well, I think the traditional view of heat in vehicles, passenger vehicles, was, was always well, yeah, let's put more radiators, more cooling capacity in the vehicle. Um, but nowadays, with energy efficiency being uh, absolutely critical to every application, we want maximum range and comfort. Any amount of heat needs to be thought of as energy, and that heat and the energy needs to be conserved. So nowadays, rather than worrying about getting rid of heat or what to do with it, we actually have to worry about how to store it and use it effectively to actually sort of look after the passengers and look after the battery at the same time. And the only convenient thing really is that the two things are actually very similar demands that the operating temperatures for a battery are actually very close to the operating conditions for a human sure. being. So, you know, you have to consider where that heat goes and, and use it as best as possible. Okay. So basically then all these thermal set management systems sound really expensive then and, and complex. Why is that the case? So although the systems are more complex, the systems actually um, work together. So um, existing, for example, your air conditioning system in the vehicle uh, would be purposed to look after the passenger compartment. It can now also look after the battery, but also with some modifications, you can use it in reverse as a heat pump. And okay. that then allows you to make useful, do useful work with that heat that would otherwise be wasted. So usually the, the bill of materials in a vehicle, although it would change slightly, the, the main key items that are still there and just being sort of repurposed to sort of better fit with the overall um, driving and, and usage of that vehicle or application. Okay, so where does Marla Powertrain fit into this equation compared to our parent company, for example, who supplies components for the, for the whole system? Well, so Traditionally, Marla was always thought of as a, as a product-led company. They, they produce um, hardware for OEMs and, and then to, to split and think about Marla Powertrain as a consultancy, really. We're, we're consultancy-led. We provide a service to our clients. So best thing, the best thing I can sort of think about is how, as an engineer, uh, we have a lot of flexibility in Marla Powertrain to be very proactive and look at things, but we also have a massive database of knowledge, expertise, um, and also products behind us to allow us to sort of um, offer not only parts, but the actual complete package in a very flexible way in quite a sort of cost-effective way to our clients. So it's looking at more of the system definition rather than just looking at isolated components, really. Yeah, and that fits with the whole the whole ethos of modern thermal management for the for a vehicle is that it is 
the whole package. It's a very holistic thing. It's not an engine and a radiator and deal with it. It's having the whole scenario of carrying a person or a load from A to B in comfort and then being able to recharge a vehicle, for example, and bring it back. And no matter what temperatures you're having to go through, the whole thing needs to be viewed as a complete package. So when it comes down to the battery development, as ba developing the battery is one thing, but actually managing the thermal system around it is you're looking at the full system side of things. So some of the radiator packs and some of the coolant pumps and things like that are all around the full system. Yeah. So you can't just think about the battery in isolation. Not at all, no. So a vehicle might have a requirement, say, for very high power for a very short duty and therefore maybe it wouldn't need so much thermal management, but after the event, after it's done its job, it then needs to recover and be dealt with some other way. Um, whereas a bus or a truck might be expected to be working all day long, stopping for very short periods to recharge and carry on going. And you need to then look at the balance of the energy and heat requirements in that vehicle for a continuous operation effectively 24-7. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, okay. So what are, are there any big threats to the market and what are the big game changes that we can expect to see? So, in general, we, we see developments, for example, at the moment people talk about Gen 6 batteries, the new larger 4600 type cylindrical cells, and they're getting much better at conducting heat, so the job of getting heat out of a cell or back into a cell is easier. And that kind of affects, well, the main effect is the density of the pack. If you've got such a power, well, energy dense pack, it leaves less space in there for cooling systems. So it does give us some challenges as well as give us opportunities. But the next generation of batteries, the, the buzzword now is solid state, and that's going to have a whole new um, raft of sort of requirements, I think. And um, I don't think you can get away from the fact that batteries have resistance and produce heat um, and require managing. So the, the, the role of thermal management will always be there. Um, we just have to be adaptive as how we sort of view it and encompass it within the rest of the system. So at the moment, Model Powertrain are developing battery packs and modules around current battery technology and things that are on the, generally on the cell's roadmaps, but when do you sort of see solid states start to appear in for development work and, and then eventually into vehicles? Well, I think I think the, the way that the industry is looking at the moment, people, a lot of people are saying it's in the next few years, and there are certainly suppliers out there with pr prototype lines. Um, whether those actually come to fruition in the next five years or so and on the ground here, it remains to be seen, I think. All right. Right, thanks very much, Bob. It's been interesting to talk to you about yep. thermal management of batteries, and hope to see you next time on the next Mile Powertrain Tech Talks.